Will they be feet of the children or going out ahead to the church? They'll be heading right out that way. Well, good morning to each of you. It's good to see you. The title of this message as we continue in the series of Encountering a Risen Savior is Christ is in the house. Christ is in the house. You know, even though that we're shorter on numbers today, I just pray that start relying upon our own. When Christ is if you have your copy of God's Word, if you have the app, it's on the app. If you don't, it's in my notes under the website slash notes. And John chapter 20, starting with verse 19. Uh, when it was evening on that first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because they feared the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Having said this, he showed them his hands. At his side. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. You know, there's a, there was something. Have you, ever, have you ever had a great event that you invited a lot of people to, and then no one showed up at the event? Have you ever done that? I used to do that with my birthday parties when I was uh, a kid. There was, uh, my mom would invite all of these people over, and there were many times, remember I had six brothers and sisters, and even many of them didn't show up for my birthday party. But there are times when there was a great event that took place, a pivoting point in our, in our whole relationship uh, in, in this world, and it was the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord invited everyone there to this resurrection. He told the disciples at least three times of what was going to take place. And nobody was there. Nobody showed up. Nobody really cared, it seemed like. When Jesus, when Jesus rose, if he was expecting a crowd, in which he certainly wasn't, but yet if he was, he would find that no one was there except the two guards that were guarding, guarding him to make sure the disciples wouldn't, uh, wouldn't take him away. And where were the disciples? They were in this house. They were in this house with locked doors, and they were there because they were so afraid of what might happen to them after they had seen what happened to Jesus. And so they locked the doors. And they were talking among each other, and there was no scripture of what the conversation was. But I promise you it had to have something to do with being so afraid and being so concerned. What do we do now? The one that we followed, the one that we gave our livelihood up for, the one that we gave our family up for, the one that is that, and now he is no longer here. He was, he was crucified on the cross, so what do we do? And in the midst of all of that, Jesus just appeared before him. He didn't knock on the door. He didn't try to kick it open. He didn't try to, he, did, he, just, he just appeared right in the house. And because that he appeared in this house, and Christ is in the house, it changed the whole attitude of whatever was going on. The attitude completely changed because Christ was now in the house. Are y'all with me? That, that Christ in our houses can make a tremendous difference. Christ here makes a tremendous difference. You know, my, my first message that I ever preached, I thought I was going to set the world on fire. There was going to be, there were going to be 50 people to 100 people saved, and it was just going to be just a great event. It was at First Baptist Church of Wicked. I shared with you the story before how even Terry hid in the nursery because she was so afraid 
of what embarrassment that I might may be during the during the service. But yet, but yet it didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen, but Christ was in the house. From Sunday to Sunday, we never know who's going to be here and who's not. Sickness is running everywhere, people on vacation, things are happening in people's lives, but it should not matter when Christ is in the house. It should not matter with our excitement, with our joy. It shouldn't matter with what we, ha- what we understand is going to happen in this church. That it's not up to me and it's not up to you, but we're going to be used by him. But if we leave Christ out, then we miss out on the very essence of what's going on. Because when Christ entered this house, all of a sudden, the fear was no more. All of a sudden, when Jesus stood among them and he said to them, I want to show you my hands. I want to show you my side. I want to show you exactly what happened. I want proof, and I want to show you that it is me. Christ is in this house. And when Christ comes into our homes, that there is a tremendous difference that's going to take place. Let's let's, Let's look at this first one. When Christ is in our homes, in the unexpected appearance that Jesus makes, If you're a child of God, he's just going to appear right before you. Now, not not necessarily as he did with the disciples, but I've never seen Jesus in the flesh, but yet he will appear to us in his spirit. And when he appears to us in his spirit, sometimes it is an unexpected appearance, but when he does appear, when he is invited, things will change in your house. Things will be different in your house. There will be no longer the fear. You see, I have, I have great fear of what happens from Sunday to Sunday. Fear whether or not that I've studied enough. Whether or not that this is a message that God wants me to share. Whether or not the people will show up. Whether or not this will just be an event that is just me and Terry one day. And, the, and, and possibly the grandkids. But yet, there comes a time... When, when we have certain fears within our life that we have to say, Lord, I release these fears to you and I want to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. You see, when Christ is invited within our house, even though that he unexpectedly appears through the Holy Spirit, that we're going to feel a great peace within our life. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You see, this is what's missing so often within our homes. This is what's missing so often within our land. You see, there there are things that are happening now, if you watch the news, that you may not have peace of what's going on with, with, uh, with Israel. Let me tell you, let me tell you, it's not a surprise of what's happening. You don't know what's going to happen? that Christ is unexpectedly going to appear somewhere and is, he's going to take the, he is going to take the, what we think is impossibility and he's going to make it right. Now, I don't fear for this. I don't fear for our country. I don't fear, but yet when it comes to my fears, I invite Jesus in the midst of it. We invite Jesus in the midst. Here's number two. Christ is always working around us. Whether we feel it, whether we see him, whether we acknowledge him, but he's always at work around us. It's not depending on you. It's not dependent on me. That you can pray about certain things. You cannot pray about certain things. But Christ is always at work around us. And we must acknowledge that. You see, when when Christ appeared in this house, They had no idea that he was at work all around them. They had no idea that where where he was and what happened. They didn't remember the things that he told them, but yet he was still at work. He was always at work. He was he was already talking to Mary and the and the other Mary. Remember Mary Magdalene of last week? He was already working there. 
He was already working around us because he was no longer in the tomb. He was no longer there. And yet the disciples locked themselves in the house. And because of that, they didn't see what he was doing. So often, we get so caught up in ourselves. We get so caught up in what's going on in our lives and what's not working out the way that we should see that we forget that he's working all around us. He's working in other people's lives. He's really focusing in on all, so many things. I put in my notes for you that he's working through answered prayers. He's working through others. He's working through transformation. He's working through scripture. He's working through the times of our trials. He's working all around us. And we got to remember that he never stopped working, even if we lock ourselves in a house. Even if we lock ourselves in fear, even if we just don't give him the, the time of day, he's still working all around us. The eclipse that took place this last week was working all around us. That wasn't an accident. That wasn't a, a climate change. It wasn't because we drive too much that that happened. It wasn't, it wasn't racial. It wasn't all the other things that you hear out there, the reason why we have the eclipse. You know why we had it? Because God said this is going to happen. And he's in charge of the moon, in charge of the sun, in charge of the solar system. He's the one that stood out upon nothing and created everything that we see. Are you all with me? You could lock yourself in a house somewhere and try not to think about all of the things that God is doing. But he's still working all around us. He's still working within our lives. Here's number three. That Christ transformed from fear to boldness. He transformed those disciples that were in fear for their life. Didn't have didn't have any idea of what, what was going to take place, was afraid of, of the community and was afraid that they were going to die. But it began to, to, they began to understand what Christ wanted them to do when he appeared because they ultimately died for Christ. They ultimately stood up with boldness. And said, it doesn't matter. You can, you can persecute us, that, that you can say that we're, that we're uh, uh, opposed to every, everything that you believe, but we are standing with Christ. All of that took place when Christ appeared. All of that took place from their fear that they had to where it was transformed into boldness. You remember Moses in Exodus chapter 3. That he, that he initially feared speaking to Pharaoh, and then he had a great boldness. You remember Joshua, when he was filled with fear, when he took over the leadership role after Moses. Remember that? And he was filled with boldness, strength, and, and he just understood. Remember David that faced a, many fearful situations and found strength and courage in his faith in God. Remember Daniel when he faced the lions in the lion's den, and he faced them. He faced death, but he knew that God was going to be with him. Remember Peter, who initially denied who Christ was, that he feared, and now he boldly started proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. You remember Paul, who once persecuted Christians. Now he stood up for who Christ was and for Christians. You see, there's sometimes that there is a great fear. And when you put Christ in the house, that fear just goes away. When you really rely upon him, the fear goes away. There are so many fears that I have faced in this world. There are so many things that I have wondered about and was curious about and I've worried about 
but yet I remember these scriptures of the disciples that were in fear in the house and locked themselves in, and I said, I don't want to be that way. I don't want to lock myself in. I don't want to forget about what Christ can do. I don't want to forget about how he can change people's lives in a heartbeat. That there's so many things that, that happens within our lives that we need to remember this and how, how he can take that fear and turn it into boldness. I am the example of that. Fearful of standing before anyone. Fearful of sharing the gospel with anyone. Fearful for not even wanting to open my mouth to where I have a boldness now where I cannot but tell people about Jesus. Where I cannot but tell people about what Jesus has done in my life and in our, in our house's life and our family's life. It's because Christ transformed us from the fear that I used to have to where is the boldness now that I have? You see, that's where we need to be as a church. That's where we need to be as a body of Christ, that we need to have the boldness to reach out to those. We need not to have the fear, but have a boldness to say that I am going to stand boldly before him. I'm going to stand where I need to stand and tell everyone that I can about Jesus. They may not all respond the way I think they should respond. But remember that God's always working around us. You see, this church and the church in general, we have a mission that Christ died for. We have a mission that he gave his life for. And we need to respond to that with the boldness. Here's number four. That Christ's power, how much power in his presence. When Jesus came into the house, that everything changed. When we acknowledge Christ's presence in our life, everything changes and looks and feels different. Things just look differently. We, we, we see things differently. We view things differently. We hear things differently. When we put Christ in the midst of everything that we do, everything is different. Our Bible studies are different. Our worship is different. You see, some people just don't get worship. I just don't. You see, again, it's, it's not about entertaining you. Are y'all with me on this? Now, now, listen to me. It's not about entertaining. It's about worship. It's not about, if this was entertaining, I've, I've told you before, if I charge you to come in here, many of you wouldn't come back, right? If I said that it would be $10 ahead to come in, but there will be many others that are curious because that makes it entertainment. But it's not about entertainment, it's about worship. It's not about it's not about just opening up the Word of God and reading it. It's a Bible study. It's knowing more about my Heavenly Father. It's not just about fellowship. It's about sharing with each other and encouraging each other and lifting each other up and letting them know that we are here together as one and that we are encouraging each other. It's not about just serving others with Jesus but yet it's about a service that we're serving with a great joy and we're serving with an attitude of greatness. Not about facing just challenges, but it's facing challenges to see how Jesus is going to see us through. It's not about getting through those challenges ourselves, but it's seeing how God is going to be able to work through those challenges that we face and as we face those challenges, he's going to give us the answers that we never could have thought of. Let me tell you, when the Israelites, when the, the Israelites were fleeing, and they were they were faced with what? On one side, they were faced with the Red Sea, 
And on the other side, they were faced with an army that was going to kill them. And there was no one there. There was no one there that prayed, Lord, I know you're going to part this Red Sea. I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to They were there, and you know what? The first thing they did, they started blaming the pastor. Y'all with me? They blamed Moses. Moses, if you wouldn't have brought us out here in the wilderness, we could still be enslaved back home. But now because you brought us here, now we're going to die here. Now this is all your fault. So what are you going to do? And God says, Moses, raise your staff. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Are y'all with me? You see, we pray a particular prayer. If we have money problems, we pray for more money. Maybe it's not money that God wants to do and work through your life. You see, there was no one that prayed that the Red Sea would part. And when, when Moses raised his staff, the Red Sea parted. And not only did people walk through that Red Sea, but it says that they were on dry ground when they went there. Are y'all with me on this? You see, so often when we're faced with a challenge, we limit God because of our prayer. Oh, I think he's still going to do what he's going to do. But I think we limit him because we pray. And when we pray, we don't invite him into the house. I pray, Lord, that I, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Are y'all with me? When, when we go through challenges, Lord, we need a miracle to happen. And God will reveal himself to us when he's ready, and it will be so miraculous, you didn't even see it coming. All the, all the Israelites, they were just griping and griping and moaning at, at Moses, and as they were doing so, behind them, the miracle was taking place. All you got to do is turn around sometimes. See, in Christ's presence, even making decisions, we need to have the clarity of what Christ wants us to do. Don't just make decisions upon on what you know and what you think. Oh, I never, I never pray about what I wear. Are y'all with me? I never, never pray. Now, I have looked through some videos before and said, ooh, I don't look good in that. I need to change. You know, because video makes you look, see, I'm really not as fat as I look, right? Right? Because you're looking through the lens of the video camera, right? But yet, anyway. So, but when we're making decisions, we need to have a clarity and a peace that Christ wants us to have. When we're facing temptations within our life, for us to be able to resist them, for us to be able to move forward, for us to be able to understand we need Christ in our house. We need Christ in the house. When we're dealing with our fear, when we're embracing hope, we need Christ in the house. And if we, if we don't invite him in and we try to lock him out, that he's going to have to force himself within our life, but yet we need to invite him in and say, Lord, you have full reign in this house. I don't know what you're going to do, and I don't know when you're going to do it, but when it happens, we're going to be ready for it. Are y'all are y'all with me? Some of you don't want this, do you? I, I can tell. You just don't want this. They may take my chair. They may take my chair. If uh, You see, that's why we moved around. We're no longer over there. We're over here now. Are y'all with me? Because we want more people to take our chair. You see? There's so many, there's so many obstacles that stands in, in Christ's way when we need to say, I want you in this house today. And I'm going to pray all week long for next Sunday. Right now, we need to be praying for next Sunday. Right now, we need to be praying for Wednesday night. Right now, we need to be praying for our neighbors and the people in our lives and our families. And we need to be able to share with them in the way that we need to share. And here's the fifth thing, Christ working through us. And this is the hardest part, and this is what we find 
fearful sometimes. <clears throat> we don't want to give over everything because we're so afraid of how he's going to use us and what he's going to call us to do. You know the reason why I never learned Spanish? Because I never wanted to go to Mexico. Lord, I am not learning Spanish because now you can't send me to Mexico. Yeah, well, that could be wrong, right? Right? Well, you're just going to go to Mexico and you just don't know Spanish now, right? And so, so as he's working through us, we have such a fear of what he's going to challenge us to do. He has, he has such an idea of what he wants us to do in our life, but yet we have such a fear of what might happen if we say, Lord, send me. Lord, here I am. Do something in my life. Work through me in such a way that I need to be worked through. But we're so afraid. So we lock ourselves in a house. We lock ourselves in the house, hoping Jesus doesn't know where we're at. And you know what? Jesus knows where you're at. Jesus knew where the disciples were. It didn't say anywhere in the scripture that he went door to door to try to find them, did it? He just showed up. He didn't show up in 10 other houses before he showed up in this house. He showed up in the right house at the right time when they had locked the door, and sometimes we do that out of fear. What does he want us to do? He wants us to share the gospel. What does he want us to do? He wants us to make disciples. Remember what he said in the scripture? The very last scripture in verse 21, he says, Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. That wasn't just for the disciples in the house. It was for us. The disciples that are here in this house. What does he want us to do? He wants us to demonstrate God's love. What does he want us to do? He wants us to serve others. What does he want us to do? He wants us to pray without ceasing. What does he want us to do? He wants us to be a living witness and a testimony. What does he want us to do? He wants us to be his ambassadors. What does he want us to do? He wants sometimes to suffer for his sake. <clears throat> he wants to work through us and not in spite of us. I've always said, Lord, I want to be open to anything that you want me to do, whatever it is. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I retired from this a long time ago. Are y'all with me? Took my retirement and ran. Ran all the way. Well, I didn't run anywhere. I, I stayed here. That's why I'm here. I want to be used. Why are you here? You just want to be a participant or a spectator? You want to come every Sunday and just say that I've been to church? Or do you actually want to be a participant in what's going on? Yesterday, I did something I hadn't done in a long time. I walked around the track with a little twirly thing. Yeah. Yeah, come on. I walked around that track three times. Three times, I did. I don't know how many miles it was, but it felt like a hundred. Courtney, it really did. But yet, I want to be used in every area that I can be. I want to be an encouragement to those that are around me that are going through some tough times. I want to. I want to do things and experience. I don't. I don't. I want to be a, a participant, not just a spectator. I want to do the things that God wants me to do every day. That I get up and I pray, Lord. Today is the day that you have made, and today is the day that I want to be able to share you with someone in my life. Not that they go running away from me, but to share with them in a natural way. 
and to share with them in a loving way and to just show them that there's something different that's going on in this house, <laughs> in this body, in this life. So where are you? You lock your doors, shut your windows, turn your alarms on, and says, I, I think we I think we're safe. I don't think Christ can find me here. But let's look at someone else real quickly that thought that they could run from God. I don't understand this whole story. But there was a man named Job. who God said, you need to go to a place called Nineveh to preach. You need to tell them about me. And he said, oh, Lord. He said, that, that those, those people are mean in Nineveh. They're mean in Nineveh. So what did he do? Y'all remember this story? He got on a ship going the opposite way. And you know what ended up happening? He ended up in a well. And you know what? Not a well, well, well. Can I say that right? A big fish. Let's put it that way, yeah. So he ended up inside of a big fish, and guess what shore God spit him out on? The island of Nineveh. You see, I never wanted to be swallowed by a fish. I never wanted to be spit out by a fish, and I certainly... Never wanted to be cast out into the sea to where the big fish can swallow me. So I said, Lord, I just want to do it your way. I don't want to, I don't want to have to go through the pains of this. I don't want to have to take a different route and then end up being, being brought back where I need. I want to make sure that you're in this house, that you are filled up in me, so I'm going to be able then to know exactly what decisions I need to make every day. I need to know what I need to do with my life. I need to know the focus of my day. I need to know every aspect that I'm going through. I need to know that. But we cannot know it if we lock our doors and we shut our windows and we try to get away as far away from we can from Christ. These disciples learned that when Christ shows up, things change. We need to learn this, not to fear Christ, but to embrace him. Not to be running away from him, but to say, Lord, I want you to do anything and everything possible through my life. I want to be open in every aspect that I can be because he wants to do something great in your life. He wants to do something great here, right here, right here at CBC. Some have given up. I had a, uh, had a gentleman from another church a couple of weeks ago ask if we wanted to sell. I heard you're struggling. How about if you sell your building and you what do you think I said? The sound booth got it, yeah. Let me tell you, I said this. God isn't through with this building yet. God isn't through with what we're doing here yet. God hasn't said we need to close the doors. I don't think he's ever going to do that. I think that God is going to continue to do a work here that's going to amaze many people that struggle with the idea that God can do something here, here among us. And yet, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I'm telling you, Christ is in this house. Christ is in this house. We can we can take out more chairs, y'all with me. I believe putting in more chairs because you know what we are we are standing on faith every day that God's going to fill this place up. Are y'all with me here? Well, some some of you some of you are not. Are y'all with me here? 
You can shout. Come on. You can shout to me. That's what when Christ is in this house, things shake. And the one thing that changes is our worship. One thing that changes is our prayer. One thing that changes is our hope. One thing that changes is the desire. Let me tell you, there are churches out there that are struggling greater than we are. Struggling greater than we ever thought we could ever struggle. And there are, there are so many that have given up. Given up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up on you. You see, Jesus, I don't know about you, but Jesus didn't call me to close the church. Y'all with me? Never, never. I had a, when we left uh, Crest Temple over in Dallas, our associate pastor became the senior pastor. And he didn't close that church, but it happened to be the third church that he left that was doing horrible when he left. And he began to doubt whether or not that he was called to be a pastor. He began to doubt whether or not that he was doing what God wanted him to do. And as he struggled with that and struggled with that, he began to understand that God was using and working through him as there were situations that were before him. And that church is more alive today than ever before. You see, he he kept where he needed to be, be faithful when it first started as a mission church kept being faithful every single Sunday. And because of that faithfulness, they now run close to 300 every Sunday because of that faithfulness. What if he would have closed the door? It wouldn't be what it is today. I don't know why I got on that subject. I just want you to know, don't give up. Don't give up. Pray for your church. Pray for each other. We've got a great church here. Are y'all with me? We've got a great church. And those work, th- those of you that are watching online, it's not for sale, okay? It's not for sale. Because God wants to, for us to continue to do his work here. Text dot can take our sign. We still have people coming. I don't even know, I, so, sometimes some of our visitors come and I said, how in the world do you know what time we, have? how do you know we're even a church since we're, we have no sign anymore? You see, it's God drawing people into our church. So many visitors have come in and they can take our sign, they can do many things, but yet there's greater things to come. You know, we won't be able to have the 40 foot sign that we thought we were gonna have at one time. We, unless one of you are very generous to do that. But you know what? Christ is in the house. And he's going to be drawing more people here and drawing more people here. You see, this it's not just about the area of involvement with the church and with people around us and more people moving in. That it is about the faithfulness of you the faithfulness of what you know Christ is going to do here and your excitement to be able to go out and share and say, Lord, you need to, you need to come to this worship service. You need to come, not for entertainment because we can't compete with many churches that entertain. We can't compete with many churches who do things for other reasons besides lifting up Christ. But yet we can do exactly what he's called us to do. Say that Christ is in this house. We're going to lift him up. We're going to praise him. We're going to worship him. And I thank each and every one of you for being here each week, encouraging me. And I hope that I am there for you also. So today, I think it's just an invitation of saying, what do you want me to do, Lord? Think of yourself in the house with the disciples. Think about the fear that they felt. And then Christ entered and immediately 
everything changed. There was a great peace about it. Do the same thing here within your life, with your life at your house, and with the struggles that you may be having also, but yet Christ wants to be in your house, in your life, that he wants to fill us with his spirit. And would you allow him to do that today? Open the doors, open the windows, and say, Lord, please come in. Please be a part of my life that I, that I want exactly what you want me to do. Let's all stand together as we pray. Father, we pray now that your glory will shine within our lives. We pray, Lord, as we open up our lives to you and we say, Lord, we want you in this house, that we want to be a part of everything that you're doing here. We want you to just, just encapsulate us, Father, to where we, we understand everything about you and you, you give us a peace and take away all the fear. We pray, Father, that this would be a time, that this would be the day. And Lord, that we look around us and we see so many people gone today. We pray, Father, that you would get lay on our hearts of who we need to reach out to, who we just need to encourage, just to make sure that they're okay. Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for your love. And ultimately, we thank you for your peace. Lord, if we stand before you today.